Now let's bring you a flashback, a recap of stories that made headlines during the week. On Monday, the Kaduna State Police Command said it arrested one Ali Shwaibo, a 60-year-old man suspected to be among inmates who escaped during the Kujay Correctional Facility attack in Abuja. Spokesperson of the command, Mohammed Jalige, said the suspect was arrested at a location in Kaduna while in transit to Kano, his home state. The Commissioner of Police, Kaduna State Command, Yakini Ayoko directed that the suspect be handed over to the Nigerian Correctional Service of Operatives after the completion of the necessary protocols. And same Monday, Bayo Adeleke Lawa was sworn in as the new Deputy Governor of your State. He was sworn in by the State Chief Judge Justice Mukhtar Abimbola. Governor Ashe Makide urged the new Deputy Governor to make the welfare of the people of your State a priority. The swearing-in of the new deputy governor, Adebayo Lawao, came few hours after the impeachment of Raouf Olaniyo, who was accused of misconduct. The House, at a separate sitting, approved Bayo Lawal as the new deputy governor of the state after being nominated by Governor Sheyima Kinde. The approval was followed by an inauguration which was conducted by the chief judge of Oyo State and witnessed by Governor Shei Makinde and other top government functionaries in the state. I, Adebayo Adeliki Lawal, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will be faithful, that I will, I will be faithful, and we are true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, that as Deputy Governor of Oyo State, that as Deputy Governor of Oyo State, I will discharge my duties, I will discharge my duties, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability. In his remarks, the governor of Oyo State says much is expected from the deputy governor as he was entrusted the position based on his remarkable achievements in the past. So let me encourage you to put the interest of the good people of Oyo State first. Because uh, we said uh, if you beg there, we're going to give you more work. And you continue to supervise the housing corporation. Uh, even from this uh, position. I have taken that from the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and I know that it's a position of trust. Trust to the Constitution and trust to the appointor, which on Tuesday, the Academic Staff Union of Universities insisted it will not back down on the strike, despite the two weeks directive handed down to the Education Minister to prove a solution to the lingering ASA strike. The National President of ASA, Professor Manuel Sodeke, presented the union's position in Abuja. Hours after President Muhammad Buhari directed the Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, to halt the ongoing ASA strike in two weeks, the union has put forward its position to the media. Six weeks, this issue will be resolved. Asu accuses the Labour and Employment Minister, Chris Ngigi, of being the cog in the wheels of progress. Asu did not expect the President of the Republic to, or the Federal Republic of Nigeria to sign that document because neither the 2009 agreement under review nor any of the previous agreement was directly signed by the head of government. What we said, and we are still saying, is that the government team was expected to update the needed clearance to sign the draft agreement which came out of the collective bargaining process. The union expresses confidence in the ability of the Minister of Education to carry out Mr. President's directive, but cautions that Chris Ngigi should not be involved. These two weeks, our prayer, I know the prayer of President Nigeria that they can resolve this issue within two weeks. If that man called the Minister of Labor Ngigi, is not part of it. We have to be very clear because he's the one creating the problem. Ngige kept telling us that it's the chief conciliator. It seems to us now, with our research on ILO conventions, that Ngige himself does not even understand the regulations as far as conciliation are concerned. The union says it is desirable to end the protracted industrial action, but insists its demands must be met. We are in a country where you can, we are asking for $2 billion every year to fund education. To fund education, and the government says they don't have such money. 
But that same government will also say that I released 200 billion for the feeding of children in primary and secondary school. I have not seen any child that I've told him that he has been fed. Asu is also upbeat about the planned NLC but National the, Solidarity Protest. The initiative of NLC and its affiliate unions are quite commendable. But it's not over or it is over. The union is seeking the implementation of the renegotiated 2009 agreement, which includes funding for the revitalization of universities, halts to proliferation of universities, implementation of UTAS, payment of end academic allowance, and with aid salaries, as well as the remitters of unions check of dues. Meanwhile, on Wednesday, the federal government rejected the nationwide protest by Nigerian Labour Congress, proposed in solidarity with ASU over its lingering strike. The government said the NLC protest fixed for the 26th and 27th of July is illegal, describing it as an action based on self-interest and capable of stoking anarchy. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, said there was no dispute between the NLC as a body and the federal government and wondered why the NLC, which is a member of a tripartite committee set up to resolve the disagreement between ASU and the federal government, would now take sides on the matter. Mr. Mohammed's concern was expressed at the end of this week's Federal Executive Council meeting. And same Wednesday, the All Progressives Congress officially unveiled former Borno State Governor Kashim Shatima as the running mate of its presidential candidate Bola Ahmed Tinubu. State governors present at the unveiling described the emergence of Bola Tinubu and Kashim Shatima as a ticket that will bring growth to Nigeria. The man of the moment, Kashim Shatima, is formally presented to the entire members of the All Progressives Congress Party. Before now, there have been questions asked about the Muslim Muslim ticket, which many at this unveiling insist was based on quality and the principle of competence. You know, if you are together, if we are on the same page, this is our vice presidential It is time to purge ourselves of the bitterness arising from our individual losers, individual losses in the party primaries that were completed some few weeks back. It is an issue Kashim Shatima does not shy away from, insisting Nigerians are more concerned with good governance than issues that breed division. And I am not unaware of the difficult political arithmetic that produced this moment, especially the understanding of our great party stakeholders and supporters across religions, regions, and ethnicities. Their resolve to settle for this ticket is a testament to the pain they have in us. On his part, Ashiwaju Bolamed Tinubu believes every election brings a fresh sense of hope to millions of Nigerians and 2023 will be no different. He is confident that if elected, there will be a turnaround of things for the overall good of the masses. On his vice presidential candidate choice, he said he widely consulted before deciding to pick Kashim Shatima as his running mate for the 2023 general elections. We must win this election so that we can bring jobs, eliminate poverty, Educate our children, bring up our grandchildren without thinking of religious division nor ethnic differences. Bola Tinubu had on 10th July announced the lawmaker representing Borno Central Senatorial District as his running mate following the resignation of Ibrahim Masari, who served as a placeholder. This event witnessed the presence of party stalwarts from all parts of the country, state governors, party chairmen and party supporters. And on Thursday, the National Security Council said it will consider a nationwide restriction and halt on the distribution of motorcycles as a means of cutting sources of funding for terrorists, terrifying the people of the nation. This was during a strategic meeting in Abuja. 
the second Security Council meeting in two weeks. Another opportunity for the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces to appraise the security situation in the country, take action and make recommendations. This time it appears far-reaching measures will be taken that may have a direct implication on security across the country. The federal government is considering restricting the use and distribution of motorcycles, which is a major means of logistics for terrorists and bandits. It's extensively deliberated often as to what needs to be done for the purpose of ensuring that their means of logistics are indeed adequately considered and the necessary steps are taken in degrading their capacity to move around. The Security Council also considered a possible ban on mining activities as a way to suppress the source of funding for bandits and terrorists. It appears these mines have become the playground for criminals and has forced investors to leave the sector. The government is looking at what measures to take in terms of addressing, bridging and blocking associated source of funding including payment for ransom and indeed the mining activities and the possibility or otherwise of suspending for the time being mining activities. The Minister of Interior disclosed that a preliminary report of the attack on the Kujie Correctional Facility is on the President's desk. Sufficient efforts at intelligence were made, but unfortunately those of you who accompanied me when I visited the place will show that I said very clearly that we had some problem with the will to hurt, and that is how I want to say. I, I, I'm not blaming anybody. On the same day, Nigerian Barcelona talisman Aziza Toshola was named the 2022 African Women's Player of the Year on Thursday night. The 27-year-old picked the award ahead of Ajara Nchotonjoya from Cameroon and Inter Milan and Zambia international Grace Chanda. With this, she becomes the first African to win the prestigious award for a record five times, overtaking Perpetua Nkocha who claimed the accolade on four occasions. On Friday, the High Court sitting in Maitama in the Federal Capital Territory remanded the former Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idris, and two others at the Kujay Correctional Center the trio were arraigned by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and pleaded not guilty to a 14-count charge of stealing and criminal breach of trust to the tune of 109.4 billion naira. The charge read to me, and I am not guilty. This was the response of the former Counter General of the Federation, as the registrar of the court read out a 14-count charge to him. His co-accused Godfrey Akindele and Muhammad Usman also pleaded not guilty while a plea of not guilty was entered for Gezawa Commodity Markets and Extra Limited, being a corporate entity. Although a bare application has been filed and served on the prosecution, counsel to Mr. Idris Chris Uchi prayed the court to allow the defendants to continue enjoying the administrative bill granted them by the EFCC. Prosecuting counsel Rotimi Jacobs opposed the bare plea made by the defendant's counsel. He prayed the court to remand the defendants and allowed them, at a later date, argue a proper bill application, which Mr. Uchi has filed, and not an oral application. Delivering ruling, Justice Adeyemi Ajayi held that the court is not a puppet dancing to the rhythm of public opinion. She noted that the defendant's counsel has already filed a bill application in accordance with the law and should allow the prosecuting counsel to respond. She ordered that the defendants be remanded in the Kujie Correctional Facility pending a hearing of the bill application. In the course of reading out the charges to the defendants, the name of the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Finance was removed from the charge. If you want to know what happens in the hell, you need somebody there to come and testify. So, because we want to know the theory of the case, we want to know what happened in the hell, then we need a witness in that hell to come and testify. Contained in the charges are quite different from what was dished out to the media. 
because in the media it has all it has been all over the place that uh, the man collected billions of naira from the treasury but what we have seen shows that the contents of the book are quite different from the title of the book. In May 2022, Mr. Idris was apprehended in Kano following his refusal to honor the EFCC's invitation concerning an alleged fraud investigation. Subsequently, the Minister of Finance, Zainab Hamed, informed Mr. Idris of his suspension without pay in a letter dated 18th May. The calls are joined to 27th July.